If you're performing with Ableton Live, then you need a clear way to know exactly where things are so you can navigate your set, especially during live performance if something goes wrong. Remember, Ableton is just a tool and you are the mind behind the tool, so having a clear process is important. Let's take a look at how I organize Ableton Live sets. So if you haven't heard of the sit method, then you're gonna to wanna to check out the link on the screen right now. However, um, assuming that you kind of know my framework for how creating I think should go or the most effective way to do it, we're gonna talk about how I actually organize what is specific, intentional, and tested. I kinda of like to follow a couple of parameters specifically. So first of all, I like to move left to right, most dynamic to least dynamic, meaning, things that you'll most likely need to access most of the time on the left, and things that you basically will never need to touch on the right. I like to always have consistent color coding and naming conventions so that I can see by color as well as by text. Label everything, just label it, it's, it's helpful. Um, what I'm looking at so that I'm not wasting time trying to find things. And then last but not least, I like to think about what my frame of reference is going to be when I'm performing live which most of the time is my controller and actually not Ableton at all. Although you'll see when we go through this video, I do reference Ableton for a couple of things. Now there are two different types of set lists within Ableton Live. And while I still do most dynamic to least dynamic left to right, what that ends up looking like is a bit different. So let's have a look at this live setup. So this is an example of something that you might use for a cover band set. And when you have a look on the screen, you'll notice that I have everything very clearly named, but also moving left to right, you're going to see it is most to least dynamic. So most dynamic over here on the left, these are my MIDI input blocks. Now, if I'm using backline gear or if I am needing to switch something up for some reason, I want these right at the front because I can come down here and change my keyboard very quickly. That's super duper important. Now, after that, I have my audio buses. Now these are all MIDI mapped, but during a show, I'll be controlling these buses as needed to adjust my levels, and even more so in a, a dynamic set list, which I'll show you in a moment here, but um, these need to be at the front. Now moving to the next setup here, I have this other category of instruments, which I like to call instrument containers. Now these are all colored the same way as you can see, and they are containers for my sounds. So inside of each one of these rack spaces, I have a chain which contains all of the needed information for that song. Now we'll go into those naming conventions in the next part here, but this is my next area. Then next to that, I have bread and butter sounds. These are sounds that I'm going to need to access often enough to just have them live on their own. They're not song specific because a piano exists in many different ways, um, but I need to get them sometimes. And then I have a sidechain kick here, just in case I need that. Don't ever touch this. This is MIDI mapped. It's there. Now there's another scenario where this is even more important. So let's look at the dynamic uh, patch list setup. Okay, this is an Ableton set that I would use for worship. And you'll see again, coloring very similar. Green is for MIDI receivers. Red is for instrument buses and brown is for uh, just instruments. So I never touch these. Once these are set up, they just live there forever and I never go back to them because they're bust somewhere else where I handle them. And then I have color coding for tracks. I think this will be less relevant for most people, but what really matters is that you're just doing the same thing every single time. And then I have my click all the way on the end there. So this is sort of the left to right, most to least color coded scenario. Now let's talk about labeling things and why it matters. So my naming convention is always the same. It goes song name, track name, patch name. So if we look at this through Uptown Funk, you'll see Uptown Funk is labeled first, the SS keys is labeled second, and then organ third. So I know what song it goes to, I know what channel strip to put it in, and I know what the sound is. Why does this matter? Well, what if you need to move the sound to another set list? So what this allows me to do is create a folder for any of those patches, right? Here's my Uptown Funk folder, my final patches, and then here I have very clearly labeled exactly what I need and exactly where it goes. This can be really helpful because sometimes you do need to build different setups for different shows. In this case, it makes it really fast and easy. 
Okay, now the last element of organizing your Ableton Live setup is choosing your frame of reference. In other words, when I am performing live, what do I need to see, feel, or experience to know where I am? For me, this is almost always my launch control, my Novation Launch Control XL. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. I do a few full review of this device as well, which I'll link. Really like this controller a lot. But when I look at this controller, I will know what sounds are on. I will know what my volume levels are set at. And so I put a lot of weight on this particular piece of gear, helping me know where I am and what I'm doing. However, there is one other thing that I really like to see, and that is the right-hand side of the Ableton screen. So when I am looking down the side, I can see my song, and I can see what is currently playing. Now, this is particularly helpful when you are working with a set list that's never going to change. With a dynamic set list, looking at the right-hand side of the screen is not that helpful unless you are running tracks, in which case you may need to look over to see what song you're in. But between my frame of reference being my controller and my frame of reference being the right-hand side of the screen, I know exactly where I am at all times. And then the last element of organizing your Ableton setup is practicing, which I made a full video on how to practice and prepare for rehearsals, so you can check that out. However, um, practice is going to help you quickly see what you need to see. So just like you practice the music, you also are practicing interacting with your software. Because remember, you are the instrument. Ableton is just the tool. So practicing, of course, is the last uh, element of this. If you want to go in-depth more about this, make sure you sign up for my newsletter, because in addition to sharing what's going on in the uh, live keyboardist universe, I will also let you know when this course is available for pre-sale, the ultimate guide to playing keyboards with Ableton Live. So using this setup, it makes it really easy and really clean to navigate through what you are working with. If you got value out of this video, do please hit like and subscribe. Check out the videos on the screen, and I will see you next time at Live Keyboardist.